you all have heard me say a lot that I almost just feel like it's a matter of time uh, before the Ravens end up trading Chuck Clark before they ship him off for uh, whatever draft picks they receive in return, especially amidst all the rumors and stuff that we've been hearing left and right about Chuck Clark this and Chuck Clark that. But what are some more reasons that the Ravens should actually keep Chuck Clark? What are some more uh, reasons and opportunities for them to retain uh, their starting safety over the past couple of years? Well, uh, to give us some of those reasons and to help us break it down, we brought on a very, very, very special guest. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. Uh, we got a very, very special guest in the building. It's my guy, Jason from Huddle It Up Films. And we know that um, the topic of conversation uh, amongst OTAs and even before OTAs uh, and even during the draft has been what is going to happen with Ravens safety, Chuck Clark, uh, because apparently he had been unhappy with his contract. And then after that, the Ravens ended up drafting Kyle Hamilton uh, and there had been rumors about the Ravens uh, attempting to trade Chuck Clark, uh, but he still he still showed up. But before we get into all of that, Jason, uh, introduce everybody to you. Let them know where they can find you at your YouTube channel, what you do on there, and so on and so forth. Thanks, Engraven. Appreciate yeah. you. Love you. Been a big Engraven fan even before I started my channel a couple of years ago. So uh, appreciate you having me on. You can find me right here on YouTube, Huddle It Up Films. And uh, also, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, feel free at Huddle It Up Film. So don't forget the it, Huddle It Up. We got plenty of Raven stuff over there. You want to go check some Chuck Clark highlights? I got them. Uh, I grade every snap and then make the highlights from my notes. So it's not a lot of fluff in there. And also having discussions recently in Graven on the position groups by far. So we talked about all the receivers. I haven't gotten to the safeties yet, but what can the returning receivers do? What about the new guys? What mm -hmm. should we look for in a free agent? All that kind of stuff. I have guests on just like we're doing today. So thank you very much for having me. Oh, yeah. You already know. Man. So Chuck Clark, how you feeling about Chuck Clark? Do you think he stays? Do you think he goes? If you think he stays, what could the Ravens do? But if you think he goes, what do you think the Ravens do? Well, if he goes, I think the Ravens are going to be more than fine because of the depth they have. And especially with the versatility of Marcus Williams and Geno Stone proved mm. he could play on the back end last year. So that's the that's the most important spot is having a free safety who can organize the back end. And I think you saw a little bit of a difference when Geno Stone was playing in there as compared to a Brandon Stevens, where mm -hmm. the communication got better. He was more set. So without Chuck Clark, the Ravens will be fine uh, with Chuck Clark, though. I just wanted to say that there is a place for him on the team. There are scenarios in which both him and Kyle Hamilton can play a ton of snaps. And I'm talking about one of them having a the green dot playing 100 mm -hmm. percent of the snaps. And then the other one playing about 80% of the snaps. Because as you know, in Graven, three wide receiver sets is pretty much the base offense for every team now. So yeah. we could put out three safeties, three corners versus that, which is your dime defense, and still be good against the run, having Chuck Clark in the box as a linebacker and having Kyle Hamilton on the field at the same time. So I guess the conclusion, just to get the conclusion out first, I'm not giving Chuck Clark away. And I'm really happy that he's there at OTAs. Of mm. course, there's a tipping point where an offer would be good enough. You'd be like, look, we can get a receiver or edge rusher or a nice draft pick. We're good. We're more than good at safety. We can trade Chuck. But I'm happy he's there because I don't want to give away Chuck Clark for nothing. He can play a key role on this team with Kyle Hamilton. Mm -hmm. and, and you know something that's crazy? Uh, whenever we have conversations about the safety position, um, we just talk about the depth there and the fact that, like you brought up, they just signed Marcus Williams. Uh, they drafted Kyle Hamilton. Um, but, you know, for me personally, I, I know he's there, but I, I never think about Geno Stone. I, I never do. And, yeah, he did. I believe he had that green dot that day uh, when Chuck Clark was out with COVID in that game. I forgot what team it was up against. Um, but Geno Stone, he's shown some flashes that, that he can play in this league. 
Um, so that I, I appreciate you bringing that out because that's a player that when it comes to Raven safety depth, because you know you got guys like Tony Jefferson, Brandon Stevens, kind of even though I, I envision him playing a lot more corner this year. Um, but when it comes to Raven safety depth, he's always somebody that I, I forget about. But speaking of Geno Stone, like what stands out to you about him? His communication and comfort level on the field, uh, and his ability to play the back end. Now it's going to be beautiful this year. I think all the DBs are going to be better off having a guy like Marcus Williams behind him in Graven because, mm -hmm. I mean, we love Deshaun Elliott. He played like a Raven, big hits, mm -hmm. you know, emotional player. Like, I mm -hmm. love Deshaun. But yeah. there's a difference between having a combo safety who can play in the box or free safety and having somebody who's just darn good at free safety. That's Marcus Williams. He's an eraser. You make a mistake, he can clean it up. You can be more aggressive as a DB in your assignment with a guy like Marcus Williams behind you. So Geno Stone gives you some of that is what I'm saying. Like Geno's not just a box guy. You can put him deep and he'll be able to scan the field, see the field clearly. He's been a free safety for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it isn't anything new for him. Um, so I love the depth. You got Tony Jefferson, you know, strong safety, Chuck Clark, strong safety, Marcus Williams, free safety, Geno Stone. If he can get active free safety. And then you got the unicorn and Kyle Hamilton. So great group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the unicorn um and, and unicorns like with with cows and stuff they have two <laughs> horns on their head with bulls they have two horns on their head but with the unicorn the only corn on their head is the first and the last and um, you barely see them i've never seen one i don't know about you but yeah 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 on, on, you know, on cartoon network and disney <laughs> you know, and stuff um but that unicorn it, it is their first unicorn that's on their head um, Kyle Hamilton, he was the first draft pick, uh, for the Baltimore Ravens. How did you feel when the Ravens selected Kyle Hamilton? Good. Very good. Uh, you know, there, Jordan Davis would have been a good argument. Like I would have liked to see what the Ravens would have did if both of those players were on the board. I had Kyle Hamilton a little higher. He was the ninth overall player on my board. Mm -hmm. I had a group of 10 players in Graven that I was targeting that went from, uh, uh, Iki Aquanu, who I knew we got all the way down to Stingley. Uh, mm -hmm. Just and, and the funny part was Hamilton was the only one who wasn't at a position of need. So that'll tell you what I thought of him as, as a player. Oh. Like if we didn't have a safety or we didn't have a need, he might've been fourth or fifth on my board. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But cause he's just that good of a player. I think mm -hmm. uh, he can play anywhere on the field and he could be a joker. And that's part of the reason there's room for him and Clark on the team because Hamilton Hamilton can act as a cornerback, you know, in layman's terms and cover some of these bigger slot receivers. So you have a guy that can play the run and play the pass is what I love about Hamilton. That's perfect. And, and that's what Ravens need. That's, that sounds very Ravens like the more you can do because uh, they love those versatile players, the players that can play multiple positions. And it's something that I remember, um, I think it was Marcus Williams in a presser uh, last week. He mentioned it. Um, sort of like the, the he just said that with this defense, uh, Mike McDonald wants guys that can play different positions. Um, and I know you, you hear the term uh, in NBA uh, about or muscle basketball as a whole, positionless basketball, and it almost seems like that's what Mike McDonald wants uh, from this defense. So we'll see how that goes. Now, um, back to the subject at hand, the man of the hour, um, Chuck Clark. Well, what does it say to you? Uh, you briefly spoke about it before, but what does it say to you about the fact that uh, amidst all these rumors, um, all this talk about him possibly being shipped out, he still showed up? It means a lot. And quite frankly, Engraven, I was surprised just reading through the tea leaves. I think that there was there had to be some smoke. I think Chuck had to feel some kind of way about uh, just his role possibly being reduced. Mm. And uh, just mm. ultimate professional. Like I, I try to put myself in the, in that shoe, in his shoes. And I'm not sure whether I'd be there, but a uh, brand mm -hmm. new defense, brand new defense. And uh, you know, I could see a scenario again where Chuck, maybe they sat down with him and said, look, Chuck, we still want you to have a green dot. We don't want to put all that on Kyle Hamilton. We're still going to need you on the field. hundred percent of the time. We're going to move Hamilton to the slot, let him cover Kelsey when we played the chiefs. That kind of thing. You know what I mean? Take away those big receivers. Some of those responsibilities that Chuck had to do. Mm -hmm. um, Hamilton's a better coverage player one-on-one, -on -one, I think, than, than Chuck Clark. And let Chuck Clark be that pseudo linebacker. So uh, 
you know, maybe Chuck sees that as like, look, man, I'll just play in the box. I got Marcus Williams behind me. I can play free. I don't have to worry about all this, you know, post snap stuff. I just concentrate mm-hmm. on one thing, play in that box and wreck shop. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of credit, though, to Chuck Clark. It's one thing to say that and to lay it out. Mm-hmm. He's probably still unhappy, maybe, you know, I don't know. But uh, for him to show up, just ultimate professionalism. And uh, it's a good sign for me because I wouldn't have, if you would have asked me before OTAs, I'd say, nah, Chuck's going to sit out and posture and try to figure out his position with the team mm-hmm. before he shows up. Right, right. And um, something that you mentioned uh, when it comes to Chuck Clark and him just being able to uh, focus more on one thing uh, instead of several different ones. I know Patrick Queen mentioned that was something that he struggled with, just really focusing on so many different things uh, instead of just one. And I know with Mike McDonald, with his defense, uh, that's something that he has wanted to really uh, relegate to the players for them to just be able to focus on their task. Uh, and simplify things, simplify the the way terms are, simplify the defense as a whole, um, and just make it easier uh, for them to learn exactly what their role is. As far as Mike McDonald, as Ravens defensive coordinator, how do you feel about him? What do you think he's going to bring to this team? A lot of question marks in Graven. I mean, I think it's a who knows, a wait and see type of thing. Mm -hmm. But I think some of the signs are encouraging. Uh, you got to think Mike McDonald was with the Ravens for the majority of his career. He's not really coming from Michigan. He's coming back to the Ravens is a better way to say it. Sure. He yeah. was with Michigan for one year mm-hmm. when he got, and I watched these Michigan games and I'm just watching it. I wasn't studying Ojabo or Hutchinson or any of the or Jacksonville. I was mm-hmm. just looking at the defense as a whole. And I'm thinking to myself, this doesn't look like uh wink Martindale. This doesn't look like Rex Ryan. This, this doesn't look like Chuck Pagano. This looks different. So what that told me is, I mean, he had a great front four in Graven. He had two guys that would have went probably in the top 15 mm-hmm. with Hutchinson and the Jabo. Did he try to change the defense and make them drop into coverage? No. He just basically <laughs> said, here's my front four guys. That's the strength of my team. We're going to send mm-hmm. four. We're going to drop seven. Maybe blitz a linebacker every once in a while. You know what I mean? Bring some pressure. He, he's, he's not a wallflower. He's not just going to play safe, you know, like a Dean P style, go mm-hmm. into a shell and all that other stuff. But, um, you know, long story short, who knows? But I like the fact that when given the talent he was given at Michigan, he maximized that. He didn't try to push his scheme upon anybody. And that's why another reason to go back to Chuck and Kyle Hamilton, another reason I could see both of these guys playing 80% of the snaps or more, and more. You know, one of them is going to have the green dot and be on there all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, how would you feel if Kyle Hamilton got the green dot? Would you be comfortable with that? Do you think he'll be able to handle it? I'd be a little nervous as for a rookie, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if they see it, then I'll, I'm going to have to trust the Ravens and then ju- just be, for lack of a better word, judgmental after that. But, mm-hmm. you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I'd feel personally, if it was up to me, I'd have Chuck Clark with the green dot. Right. And I'd have, ha- I'd have Hamilton playing 80, 85% of the snaps, just saying, all right, Kyle, just do this. You know, you don't have to do everything like Patrick Queen was asked to just do this, just do that. Let Chuck handle all the dirty work before the snap and turn Kyle Hamilton into a playmaker. So that's kind of how I would envision it. Although, Graven, I got to be honest. Somebody says, look, you don't take Kyle Hamilton off the field. He's too darn good. Mm. Give him the green dot. You can talk me into that. Like, I don't I don't feel strongly either way, really. Right, right. Um, how about yourself? Do you have a – what would you – how would you feel about that, if you don't mind me asking? <sighs> Initially, when I first thought about it, I'm like, man, I, I, I just wouldn't envision the Ravens giving the rookie – uh, a green, the green dot um, for him to call the plays and him to get the defense in order and whatnot. But then um, I thought about it and something that you mentioned too, it's a brand new defense. Um, so it, he did, like you mentioned, Mike McDonald, he had been with the Ravens before for the longest and he went to go. It's like he, he, he took a little vacation for a year uh, with the, with Michigan and now he came back. Um, so a lot of the stuff may be the same, but a lot of stuff would be different. Um, and with that being said, um, if it's all different, if it's a brand new defense, then it's almost like it's a level playing field for everybody. Um, but obviously with veterans being in the game, being around the NFL, uh, some things they may understand a lot more than a rookie coming in. But it, it is still a level playing field. So if Kyle Hamilton was to have the green dot, uh, he's learning a brand new offense, just like Chuck Clark is learning a brand new offense, just like a lot of these guys learn. This. I mean, excuse me, not offense, defense. You know, right. I, I get so focused on offense, it slipped in there. They but um, they, <laughs> they're learning a brand new defense altogether. So 
with it being a level playing field, I I, I wouldn't mind it. And it yeah, would be sorry for the question, man. I had to ask no. your opinion because I could be talked into it either way, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, with uh, if if he was given a green dot, um, it would be I I, I know there will come some struggles, which hey, that's part of the game. They're gonna come some struggles whether he has a green dot or not. Um, but I feel like, especially with health, if he has a green dot, then I feel like with with health alone, he'll have so much help around him. Uh, to usher him into the NFL, you got guys like uh, Marcus Peters, you you, you got uh, uh, Marlon Humphrey, you got a, a Josh Bynes, you got a Calais Campbell. You have some very uh, powerful football minds uh, around you. Uh, you have some very powerful leaders around you and guys that are going to be like, hey, it's, it's OK. We got you. So if it was given to Kyle Hamilton. I, I would be fine with that. I'd be cool with that. It took me a little while to come around to it, but really after thinking about the whole scenario and the whole situation, yeah, I, I would be all right with it. Kyle Fuller, too. Another vet. Oh, man. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, man. It's, 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 it's a great mix, man. It really is. I'm excited about the secondary. Mm hmm Now, um, we know that you would prefer Chuck Clark to stay, of course, and you gave a lot of great reasons for that. But if Chuck Clark were to be traded, what would you feel he would be worth in a trade? That's the tough part, you know, mm -hmm. and if I think that in some ways he's worth more to us than he is other teams, mm -hmm. because I do think there'll be, it's a new defense, but I think a lot of the terminology may be the same. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like learning a big vocabulary worth, you know, a, you know, dictionaries worth of vocabulary. Chuck's going to have some of that down. Mm -hmm. But I guess what I'm well, saying is if, if it's a third, if you're offered a third round pick, a fourth round pick, uh, a veteran wide receiver, uh, a veteran edge rusher who you think improves the room, then go ahead and do it. Like uh, it would be hard to do, but keep in mind, Chuck is only making about three and a half million uh, per year. So it's, mm. it's not like we're paying Chuck Clark double digits to be here. Mm. Um, if you're talking about, Hey, let's trade Chuck for a sixth round pick or something like that. I'm not down. Now the one guy I think could really use Chuck is Wink Martindale in <laughs> at the New York giants. Yeah. I look at that roster engraving, and if I'm going to be kind because it's they're NFL players and they've achieved more money than I'll ever see, but that roster is kind of hurting on defense. And to have Chuck Clark come in, organize everybody, to get them lined up properly, and to instill Wink's mentality on those New York Giants, mm -hmm. that's the other team that I could see him being as valuable to as he would be here. So mm. who knows, man? I mean, it could be that close. It could be like – if we're offering a six. There's no way we're we're trading Chuck Clark for that. If we're offering a third or a fourth. Well, maybe that depends on how deep next year's draft is. Can you get a Travis Jones in the third next year, like this year, or a Fa Lele or Armour Davis? You know, if not, maybe even a fourth round pick wouldn't do it. So yeah, million dollar question there, man. I wish I had the wish I had the answer because he's cheap, man, three and a half million. But strong safeties are devalued. They're not like the Marcus Williams and the Earl mm. Thomas who who get paid the money. Mm. That's a really, really good point you made there. That would be something to see Chuck Clark in a New York Giants jersey, especially because the Ravens played the New York Giants this year. So that should be a lot of fun. Greg Roman going against Wink. Lamar going against Wink. Wink testing out his defense against this offense. That should be a, a lot of fun, man. Can't wait to see it. Hey, man, hopefully he plays some hero ball. Maybe he'll treat us like the Chicago Bears and – <laughs> <laughs> the Chris Westry, maybe he'll put the Chris Westry of his team out on the island with the game on the line and uh, <laughs> we'll see how see how Mr. Bateman handles that. So, yeah. Sorry, hey. Wink. Love you, Wink. Thank you. But, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Man. But anyway, Jason, uh, appreciate you coming on. One more time, just let everybody know where they can find you at. Yeah, man, huddle it up films on YouTube. Definitely go over there. I've been having some fun conversations. If you mm -hmm. notice, I can't help but to take a couple jokes and cheap shots, even, even with the professional over here in Graven. So, yeah, we have some fun over there, but also it, it should keep you busy during the summer. The highlights, the game breakdowns. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, if you want to see some Tristan Cologne stuff, you can. If you want to see some Broderick Washington, you can. If you want to see 20 minutes of Lamar, you can. So go over there. Welcome, welcome to the family. I always say football is family. And y'all are more than welcome to go over there. And, uh, you know, thanks, Engraving. This, this was fun, man. This is a good talk. Oh, yeah. You already know, man. So, team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all watching. Make sure you subscribe to Huddle, Huddle It Up Films. His information is all going to be down below in the description. Uh, so, that'll make it easier for you. I appreciate y'all watching. I appreciate you coming on, Jason. 
We out. Shout out to Graven.